I go to Walt Disney World every single week, and these are the best things in the Magic Kingdom. Welcome back to another episode of Molly's Favorite Things. It's like Oprah's Favorite Things, but with less yelling. Thanks to my job, I go to theme parks every single week, usually three to four times a week, so I have developed a lot of opinions. I've got ideas on the best, the worst, my favorite things throughout the park, so that's exactly what this show's about. I'm gonna head all around the Magic Kingdom and choose my favorite thing in each land. It could be a ride, it could be a snack, it could be a show, it could be something underrated. We're gonna give some tips and tricks and do a little park tour along the way, so I hope you're ready, I hope you're excited. Let's get to it. Magic Kingdom is, of course, the oldest of the Walt Disney World theme parks. It's the OG here. This is when most people think of Walt Disney World, this is probably what they think of. They think of Fantasyland and Pirates of the Caribbean and Haunted Mansion and all those goodies are right here. So there's some tough decisions to make. Now, if you've never seen Molly's favorite things, this is how it works. I am gonna go through the park land by land, list out all of my options, give some of my runners up, and ultimately choose my favorite thing in that land. Now, would this be a lot easier if I just made a list of my top X favorite things in the park? Yeah, it would, but what's the fun in that? So when I got to Magic Kingdom today, I grabbed a map, definitely grabbed a marker and nothing else, and I went through the map meticulously to pick my favorite things in each land, and I think we got a pretty solid list, a little bit different than some of the other parks have turned out, but let's get to it. Start right here on Main Street USA. Welcome, friends, to Main Street USA. This is your gateway to the Magic Kingdom. Oh, it's like the train is welcoming us. This is when you first step into the Magic Kingdom, the land that greets you. And right on the end of it, you've got the beautiful Cinderella Castle looming 189 feet down below you. Now, there's not a bunch of attractions here on Main Street USA. You do have the Main Street vehicles that will ride around during the daytime. And of course, you've got the Walt Disney World Railroad. It does make multiple stops throughout the park. Here, Storybook Circus, which is part of Fantasyland and Frontierland. And I'm not going to lie to you, the train did make my shortlist for my favorite thing in the Magic Kingdom on Main Street USA. It's just such a quintessential Disney experience to ride the train around. It's very relaxing. Walt Disney loved trains, which is why they have them here in Disney World. And in Disneyland. Also on my short list right over here, you've got the Town Square Theater, which is divided into two sections. You've got Tony's Town Square Restaurant, which is themed to be the Italian restaurant from Lady and the Tramp. The food's pretty mediocre, though I have heard with new menu updates, it's gotten a lot better, so I may have to check it out again. But what for me is special here in Town Square Theater is this is where you can meet Mickey Mouse in the Magic Kingdom. So that also, of course, had to be a short list. Of course, Main Street USA is also home to things like City Hall, which is guest relations, stroller, wheelchair, and ECV rental, first aid, which is down by Casey's Corner locker rental. So kind of all your necessities are here on Main Street USA as well. And while I did work in City Hall for many, many years, it's definitely not my favorite thing. Although I do have fun memories. Moving into kind of the more fun things as you walk down Main Street USA, you've got the confectionery right here. This is your candy store hosted by M&M and Mars Candies, as well as you've got those great bakery cases that have your Rice Krispie treats and your cookies and your fudge and your caramel and candied apples. You can also do customized popcorn here where you can create your own popcorn blend featuring different flavors of popcorn, different toppings, different syrups. I actually really enjoy that. And I love a good Rice Krispie treat or caramel apple on Main Street USA while watching the fireworks so that also makes my short list. Main Street USA is also home to the majority of the shopping here in the park with the largest store being the Emporium. I love a good Disney merchandise shop and I could stroll them for hours. The Emporium is where you're going to find things like ears, apparel, home goods, toys, pet things, pins, collectibles, all kinds of stuff but what I will say about the Emporium don't go at the end of the night if you can avoid it because it is very 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 busy and chaotic. On the other side of the street, you've got some more shopping. You've got Uptown Jewelers, which is going to have some more of your upscale products. So this is going to be where your Dooney and Burke items are, lounge flies, the dress shop dresses, Alex and Ani, kind of your more expensive Disney souvenirs. You have a few smaller merch locations, including the Silhouette Artist Cart and the Crystal Art Shop, where you can get beautiful crystal works of art and often see someone blowing glass, which is really cool. And then we get into our dining options at the end of Main Street USA. You've got the Main Street Bakery, which of course is the Starbucks. So you can get all your favorite Starbucks treats as well as things like Mickey cinnamon rolls. Next door, you've got the Plaza Ice Cream Parlor. Where you can get hand-scooped ice cream sundaes and a variety of other treats. I do love a good classic hand scoop of ice cream, especially during the fireworks. 
Pro tip, anybody can order a kid's cone and it comes with a scoop of ice cream and two little chocolate discs that make a little Mickey. It's adorable and it's the perfect size of ice cream. And of course, it makes sense that right next to the Plaza Ice Cream Parlor, we've got the Plaza Restaurant. This is, I think, a pretty good restaurant here in the Magic Kingdom, which you'll hear me say time and time again, is the weakest park when it comes to food, in my opinion. Of course, you've got great desserts, great milkshakes being attached to the Plaza Ice Cream Parlor, but mostly the food is pretty classic. They've got things like burgers, meatloaf, onion rings. I do like the Plaza fries, which are loaded French fries, a couple salads and sandwiches, so nothing over the top, but a good, reliable meal. Plus, you get a great view of the cat. And on the other side of the street, you've got Casey's Corner. This is the baseball themed hot dog restaurant that you'd think would be my least favorite restaurant in the park because I hate hot dogs, but it's actually not. I really like the famous corn dog nuggets that you can get here. Make sure to add that extra melty cheese for a dollar. But of course, they've got a variety of hot dogs, fries, slushies, sodas, very, very popular quick service spot, especially because while you do have to sit outside, you get this beautiful view of Main Street USA and the castle. So corn dog nuggets also make my short list. And last but not least on Main Street USA, we've got the Crystal Palace. This is a character dining experience, breakfast, lunch, and dinner buffet with Winnie the Pooh and friends. So it's usually Winnie the Pooh and Tigger 2, Piglet and Eeyore. I really like Crystal Palace as well, especially for breakfast uh, because I love the Winnie the Pooh characters. This is the only place you can reliably meet Eeyore and Piglet. And it's, I think, pretty decent food, especially again, if you come for breakfast. So that also makes my short list, partly for nostalgia, partly for Mickey Waffles partly for Tigger. But of all the items I just put on my short list, breakfast with Tigger, corn dog nuggets, meeting Mickey Mouse, the train, what could it possibly be? None of those things. Cause to me, the best thing about Main Street USA is the entertainment. And I know you might be thinking, there's not shows on Main Street USA, but you would be wrong. For starters, you've got the Mickey's Magical Friendship Fair. This is the castle stage show featuring Mickey and the gang, as well as song and dance numbers from Princess and the Frog, Frozen and Tangled. It is such a wonderful show. There are so many fun performers and characters. The music is great. I love watching the castle stage show. Also on Main Street USA, you've got big productions. Hello, where are you standing for fireworks? You are standing right here on Main Street USA. You are watching heavily after Blast in the Sky, listening to Jordan Fischl tickle those eardrums, and you're watching those new projections dance down Main Street. And if you're me, you're crying while that's happening. You may also be watching Festival of Fantasy. Now, that one I will give you as kind of Main Street, kind of not, because my pro tip for Festival of Fantasy is actually to watch it in Frontierland. But it is really cool to see Maleficent, the fire-breathing dragon, breathe that fire right in front of the castle. You've also got things like the Dapper Dance, which are one of my favorite things in Walt Disney World. They're the barbershop quartet. They've been on Main Street USA here in Disneyland since the beginning. They're classic, they're iconic. And then even still, you've got smaller acts like the pianist on Casey's Corner. You've also got the cavalcades, which again, start in Frontierland and work their way down. But you've got the Adventure Friends cavalcade that's got tons of different characters, including Mirabelle and Raya and Merida and Mulan and other people whose names don't start with M. It's a delight. For me, as someone who comes to the parks a lot, I think that entertainment is one of the things that makes Disney the most magical. And for me, the best entertainment in this park is right here on Main Street USA. And it doesn't hurt that you could get an ice cream or a coffee to enjoy it with. Taking a left into our next land, Adventureland. This is my preferred way to go in the Magic Kingdom. People debate right or left. I say left. Let's head to Adventureland. Unfortunately, my first runner up right now is closed for weather. It's the spring roll cart here. We can get the famous cheeseburger spring rolls. They are delicious. One of my favorite snacks in the Magic Kingdom. So of course, these are on the short list here before we even really step foot in the land. Now working our way under the famous Adventureland Bridge and we are fully immersed into the spirit of adventure. Adventureland themed to Walt's adventures in South America. So it feels like you're in a jungle. Never know what's awaiting around any corner. Now there are a ton of other iconic snacks here in Adventureland, not just the spring rolls that people have become to know and love. Adventureland is home to the Orange Bird. Orange Bird is a mascot that was dreamt up before Magic Kingdom even technically existed by Disney in the state of Florida as a promotional tool for Walt Disney World. And actually Sunshine Tree Terrace, which is now located here in Adventureland, used to be over where Aloha Isle is. Nowadays at Sunshine Tree Terrace, you can get pot stickers, you can get certain floats. This is also where you can get citrus swirl if citrus swirl 
is available, which it isn't always, but we love Orange Bird. I don't think this makes my list though. Doesn't make my short list as much as I love a citrus swirl. What does make my short list, however, is right next door, the Jungle Navigation Co. Limited Skipper Canteen, world famous jungle cuisine. That's a really long name for a restaurant, but it is affectionately known as Skipper Canteen. And as the name would suggest, it is run by the same folks who are running the Jungle Cruise, your friendly honey skippers. And because of that, you can expect a lot of fun and a very themed meal here at Skipper Canteen. The skipper's gonna make the same kind of honey jokes that they do on the attraction, and the food is actually quite good. I think this restaurant is pretty underrated as far as the food and the ambiance goes. You've got things like taste like chicken, because it is, skips macaroni and cheese, seasonal soup dishes. I really like the steak here, as well as the secret menu, Pau de Queijo, which is Brazilian cheese bread. This is also a place where you can get the Cungaluche, one of the beers exclusive to Walt Disney World. And there's tons of Easter eggs and details inside this restaurant, so it for sure makes the list for Adventureland. The first attraction we've come upon here in Adventureland is the Swiss Family Treehouse. This is a walking tour into the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse. This is definitely not gonna make the short list. I don't think it makes very many people's top must-do list. It's a bunch of stairs up. It's kind of fun to look around. Um, but, and I guess if you had kids that needed to burn some energy, this would be a good choice. But it's kind of a one and done for most people or something to do if it's super, super busy. The next attraction in Frontierland are Magic Carpets of Aladdin, which you can see are grounded right now from flight. It has been a little stormy today, but that's Florida in the summer for you. Magic Carpets of Aladdin is a Dumbo clone. It is a spinner style attraction. Two rows, one row tilts your carpet forward and back. The other one makes it go up and down. It's a fine attraction if you've got little ones, but definitely not coming close to the top of the list for favorite things in Adventureland. Now I think most people watching will agree that the next spot on our list is absolutely a fan favorite here in the Magic Kingdom, and that is of course the Dole Whip. You can grab that here at Aloha Isle Refreshments, and I would say the Dole Whip is probably the most popular Disney snack of all time. Of course, the classic Dole Whip is your pineapple Dole Whip. It's pineapple soft serve, but they have a variety of different flavors and offerings here, including a pineapple upside down cake, which comes with pineapple upside down cake topped with Dole Whip. You can do Dole Whip floats. Uh, and most importantly here for me, you can get my favorite flavor of the Dole Whips, and that is the cocoa nut. This is the only place that you can get it. It is phenomenal. It is one of my favorite treats in all of Walt Disney World. And that specifically, a cup of cocoa nut Dole Whip makes my short list. Got a few more pretty popular and important attractions here in Adventureland. The first of those is the Jungle Cruise, an opening day ride. This is where you board a vessel with those punny skippers and sail the rivers of the world and they make jokes about mechanical animals such as elephants, lions, zebras, and more. A classic, a must do, a Disney icon. It doesn't quite make my short list because otherwise it would be very, very long. But I do think the Jungle Cruise is absolutely a must do when you're in the Magic Kingdom. Gotta see that backside of water and where else could you do it? And right across the way from Jungle Cruise, you've got Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. This is designed after the one in Disneyland, like so many things in the Magic Kingdom are. But it's important because the Disneyland version is the debut of audio animatronics. Those are the robotic animals, birds, creatures, ghosts, pirates, presidents, humans, shamans, Aliens, you name it, Disney has made an audio animatronic out of it, and they are so synonymous with the Disney company at this point, it's hard to believe that there were attractions that didn't have them, but there are, like Jungle Cruise. But anyway, the Enchanted Tiki Room was the first place to have audio animatronics out in Disneyland. It's a cute 12-ish minute show here with mechanical birds and plants, and they sing songs such as the Sherman Brothers iconic Tiki 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 Room. I love Enchanted Tiki Room a lot for a historical perspective, but also because I think it's a great filler attraction to be the heat beat the rain but it's also not making my short list got a few more things before we reveal the winner here in Adventureland things like a Pirates Adventure Treasures of the Seven Seas interactive game where you grab a map and you will head around the land to help out Captain Jack Sparrow I actually think that's very fun and very underrated it's completely free not a lot of people know about it great way to kill some time and enjoy Adventureland during your stay we also have Tortuga Tavern right here, which is a quick service restaurant with kind of a hodgepodge of a menu. You've got things such as a barbecue slaw hot dog, orange chicken strips, a barbecue pork sandwich, and of course, a peanut butter, chocolate hazelnut, and banana sandwich. But despite having some of my favorite treats in all of Walt Disney World, despite having the home of audio animatronics, kind of, despite having Jungle Cruise, there is only one winner here in Adventureland, and it was the easiest decision I made all day. Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean is not only my favorite thing in Adventureland, it's my favorite ride in all of the Magic Kingdom. 
probably all of Walt Disney World. Pirates of the Caribbean is such an iconic, perfect attraction in my opinion. It's a family ride, but it's still a dark ride and thrilling. It's a boat, which is an iconic mode of Disney transportation. You've got the original song by Exitensio, but you have the new technology of the characters from the films, including Captain Jack Sparrow. It is an iconic Disney attraction. It does not get more Disney, in my opinion, than Pirates of the Caribbean. It's also the last attraction that Walt Disney himself personally worked on, so that is special as well. Of course, the Disneyland version is longer, and the Disneyland version is the original, but I love the one here in Magic Kingdom too, so let's hit the seven seas. From the Yoho to the Yeehaw, we are in Frontierland now, friends. The first thing when you come into Frontierland is the Golden Oak Outpost, which as you can see is closed right now. Quick service snack stand that sells things like chicken tenders and slushes. On the other side here, you have Pecos Bill Tall Tail Inn and Cafe. This is a more full, bigger quick service restaurant that serves things like Tex-Mex. So you're gonna have tacos, taco salads, fajitas. I actually quite like the taco salads from Pecos Bill, so that does make the list. Also making the list is simply the site of Splash Mountain being torn down. Sorry, Splash Mountain fans, wasn't for me. But this is the future site. Tiana's Bayou Adventure, the attraction that is replacing Splash Mountain. It looks wonderful despite being a water ride. The story, the characters, the music, I'm really excited for it. But we're not gonna see that for a while, so that obviously can't make the list. Frontierland is also home to Tom Sawyer Island where you board a raft and head out to the island in the middle of the rivers of America here. This is where you can explore and do the bungee bridge. You can check out Injun Joe's Cave. How is that still here? Seriously. Now I will say Tom Sawyer Island is not a must do for most people, but it is fun to explore and it's a great place if you've got little ones for them to run around and burn off some energy. Got a couple of unique snack carts here. This one is unique because it sells the Pepper Jack stuffed pretzel, one of my favorite snacks in the park. That certainly makes the short list. You've also got Westward Ho right here that sells corn dog nuggets, cold brew, which is very important, jalapeno poppers and candied bacon on a stick. So some unique snacks here. Little pro tip. Now the outdoor carts have to close for weather for the safety of the cast members. They can't be standing out there if it's thunder and lightning, but sometimes if there's an indoor location nearby, they may start selling items that the outdoor carts were selling. In this case, pepper jack pretzel. Again, this is one of my favorite snacks in the park. It's a pepper jack cheese stuffed soft pretzel. They were like, yeah, we've got two left. Score. Picked this up at Westward Ho, even though normally it's sold at the cart right next to it, but I had to get it for science to see if this was going to top the list, obviously. Mm. It's not super spicy. If you're completely spice adverse, maybe you wouldn't like this, but as someone who loves cheese and spice, honestly, I wish I had hot sauce to put on it, but this is a pretty good snack. Rounding out Frontierland, you've got the Country Bear Jamboree, an opening day show featuring audio animatronic bears singing their songs. Is that anyone's favorite? Let me know down in the comments. I know people love it. It's not my favorite, but if I did have to pick one of the bears, it would be Big Al. You've got the Frontier Trading Post right here, which is a merchandise shop specializing in pins and other collectibles. And you've got the Frontierland Shooting Arcade. But none of those things so far are the winner. In fact, I bet you know what it is. Say it with me. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is a coaster featuring a runaway train and it is so much fun. I have a lot of nostalgia for this attraction, which is probably part of why I love it so much. But truly, even as an adult, the way it whips you around, especially if you sit in the back of the train, is so much fun. I can't help but giggle and laugh every single time. I love the Wild West theme. I love riding this at night. It's somehow even better. So yeah, it was another easy answer here in Frontierland. And let's head to the wildest ride in the wilderness. Go 
Martin into Liberty Square where I realize there's an obvious answer and yes that's my answer but we're gonna talk about everything else before we get there. For starters we've got the Diamond Horseshoe restaurant. This has basically become an extension of Liberty Tree Tavern which is an all you care to enjoy Thanksgiving inspired feast. You're gonna get your turkey, your pot roast, your mashed potatoes, green beans, macaroni and cheese, stuffing. My favorite part of the meal the ooey gooey toffee cake for dessert. This isn't my personal favorite meal, if I'm being honest. I don't love Thanksgiving the meal. I'm not a big fan of turkey. However, the food's pretty solid. It's a lot of food and it's very heavy food. So some people don't want to do that in the middle of a hot park day. But if you like Thanksgiving food, you've got a bunch of big eaters, you might want to give it a try. Towards the front of Liberty Square, you've got the Ye Old Christmas Shoppy, which is your Christmas ornament store. You've also got Sleepy Hollow, which serves things like the Nutella and fruit waffle, the uh, chicken and waffle sandwich, very, very good. Sleepy Hollow definitely makes the short list. This is also the home of the Hall of Presidents, which is a 25, 30 minute stage show featuring audio animatronics of every single US president. Hall of Presidents definitely doesn't crack my short list. However, I think it is very impressive when the curtain raises and you see all those animatronics. If you're a history nerd, at least go to the lobby where they have items of actual presidents dating all the way back to George Washington. And if nothing else, it's a good place in the air conditioning to take a nap. Liberty Square also has the market where you can get grab and go snacks. It's got the river boat, which is a slow river boat that takes you around the rivers of America on a nice 20 minute jaunt. It's got Columbia Harbor House. It's a good quick service restaurant, probably the best one in the park. I particularly like the grilled shrimp. I like the sandwiches. So that makes the short list. But let's be honest, we all know what the winner is. We all know the winner is the Haunted Mansion, right? Haunted Mansion is an opening day ride and has maintained its popularity ever since. It is one of, if not the most cult followed ride in all of Disney lore. People absolutely love it and I am people. Haunted Mansion is a family attraction and I think it's pretty perfect, much like Pirates of the Caribbean. It features that original music by Exitensio, once again, Grim Grinning Ghost. It also features the 999 Happy Hunts, but there's room for a thousand, any volunteers. I think that most Disney fans can quote at least a little bit of the ghost host in the stretch room. And it is just a delight no matter how many times you've written it, you probably are gonna notice new ghosts, new Easter eggs, new details. It's an absolute must do on your Disney vacation. There's a new Haunted Mansion movie coming out that I'm pretty excited to see. It's the only attraction I know of that's got two movies, unless you count Pirates, but those are all the same kind of. You get what I'm saying. Anyway, Haunted Mansion, easy breezy, beautiful. Obviously the choice here in Liberty Square. Let's get to it. on the Haunted Mansion. There are so many details and Easter eggs and things to look for in the story and the lore. If you like that kind of stuff, definitely check out our secret series where I hit the most popular attractions and talk about some of the backstory and the Imagineers and the things to look for. There is a ton on Haunted Mansion. Maybe closer to Halloween, I'll do a video just on Haunted Mansion. If you would watch that, let me know. And we're bidding farewell to the ghosts and saying hello to the royals because we have made it into Magic Kingdom's most iconic land, Fantasyland. And we're starting with the bathrooms. That's right, this is the only land to get a bathroom shout out because these are the Tangled themed restrooms. They are the most beautiful restrooms in all the land. Do I think Tangled deserves more than just a bathroom? Yes, I think that movie's awesome. But am I gonna cherish and love these beautiful bathrooms, especially at night regardless? Absolutely I am. Honestly, I'm overdue for a secrets video at this point because there are so many things to look for in this area alone, including the cutest little game of Find Pascal. There are 10 Pascals, the chameleon, hidden around here. And of course, because he's chameleon, they blend in with their surroundings. It's actually a lot harder than it looks, but I'll start you off with one right here. In the window basket over that window right there, you are gonna see a little Pascal hiding in the flowers. But moving on from bathrooms, you've got two of the most iconic Disney attractions next to greet you in Fantasyland. It's a Small World on your left, Peter Pan's Flight on your right. Both are family friendly attractions. It's a Small World is that boat ride inspired by the 1964, 1965 New York's World Fair attraction where you are gonna see dolls of the children around the world singing the famous It's a Small World song. I don't care that it's gonna get stuck in your head. Let it get stuck in your head and like it. It is a rite of passage here in the Magic Kingdom. And then Peter Pan's flight opening day attraction, well, almost it was two days late, but you're gonna board a pirate ship and sail over Neverland with Peter Pan, Wendy, Tinkerbell, the 
Darling Brothers, The Lost Boys, and of course, Poor Nana. Poor Nana. Peter Pan's Flight and It's a Small World are both very nostalgic to me. I have a lot of great memories with both of them, so they both make the short list. Moving through fantasy land, you've got Mickey's Philhar Magic. This is a 3D show featuring musical numbers from Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, Little Mermaid, Coco, and more. Really, really cute, really underrated in my opinion. A great way to sit down and get some AC. Fun for the whole family, a nice treat. I really enjoy that one as well. You've got Prince Charming Regal Carousel here. Not much to say other than it's a lovely carousel spin. And on the other side, you've got Pinocchio's Village Haas. This is a quick service pizza restaurant, probably my least favorite place to eat in the Magic Kingdom, though they do have Joffrey's Cold Brew on mobile order, so I respect them for that. Fantasyland is also home to Bippity Boppity Boutique, which is the makeover studio for kids under 12. And Sir Mickey's, one of my favorite merchandise shops, which features a lot of princess merchandise. Of course, Fantasyland is the land that gets to stake claim to Cinderella Castle. Who doesn't love the castle? Of course, that's going to make the shortlist just as a beacon and an icon of the park. Also, the beautiful mural work on the inside. And this is where you'll find Cinderella's Royal Table. That is a full service restaurant inside the castle, open breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And this is where you can dine with the princesses. It's a very expensive meal, a very expensive experience. However, I have a lot of nostalgic memories of going when I was a kid thinking it was the most amazing thing ever. And I went for breakfast not too long ago in a popular restaurant throwdown video we did. And I think eating in the castle is definitely one of those must do at least once Disney bucket list things. Princesses also can be found at Princess Fairytale Hall, which is a meet and greet location. Typically on one side, you've got Princess Tiana and Rapunzel, and on the other side, you've got Cinderella and Elaine of Avalor. Though it could mix up, you could have a surprise princess. As a little pro tip, if you do want to use a lightning lane here, you're going to have to book two if you want to see all four characters. Fantasyland is for sure the biggest land, so we've got lots to talk about. Here's Friar's Nook. This is a quick service stand that features tots and brats, so you're going to find different browers and different tater tot dishes. I really hope they bring the buffalo chicken tater tots back soon because those were my absolute favorite. But for now, they have things like bacon, macaroni, and cheese loaded tots, curry brat tots, and different hot dogs. Next to the Friar's Nook, you've got Storybook Treat. This features different soft serve ice cream treats, my favorite of which is the Snow White Cone, which is Lemon Dole Whip. And across from Storybook Treats is one of the most popular rides in the park, Seven Dwarves Mine Train. This is a mine car, part dark ride, part roller coaster ride, featuring, of course, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. I actually think this attraction is adorable, though some people would say it's overrated, but I think that's because it usually has a really long line. Like right now, it's 105 minutes. I think if you wait in a 105 minute long line for pretty much anything, you're gonna say it's overrated, but I think this attraction is really cute. It goes a little bit faster than you expect. I love that the mine car swings side to side as well as move forward. I love the dark ride scene when you go through the mine with the dwarves and they're singing hi-ho. I think this ride is adorable and it makes the short list. Across from the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, you've got the mini adventures of Winnie the Pooh. This, this is a family-friendly dark ride where you're going to jump in a honey pot and head through the story of the mini adventures of Winnie the Pooh. This also makes my shortlist, which might surprise some people, because you get to bounce with Tigger. You get to sail on the water. You get to see Winnie the Pooh and head into his house, and I think it is so cute. I love the Winnie the Pooh story. I always have Tigger is my second favorite Disney character. I think the theming in the queue is adorable, and this ride is just so sweet. So yeah, it's it's high on the short list, in fact. Next up in Fantasyland, you'll come up to the Mad Tea Party. This is the famous teacup ride. It's a Disney classic. It's a tradition to spin as fast as you can at least once, even though grownups, it might make us want to barf. Doesn't make the short list, but I do think the teacups are an icon. And then on the other side of the teacups, you've got Cheshire Cafe, another quick service snack stand that features the famous and delicious Cheshire Cat Tail, which is a chocolate croissant decorated to remind you of the Cheshire Cat. And they also serve Joffrey's Cold Brew, which makes me love them. Perhaps you're thinking we're done with Fantasyland because I've been talking for so long about this one land. But no, we're not. We're just getting started because there's all of new Fantasyland and According to the map, technically Storybook Circus is part of Fantasyland. I think you could make the argument that Storybook Circus is its own land, but in these videos, we go by the map and the map says they're all together. Storybook Circus is the adorably circus-themed expansion of Fantasyland where it used to be Mickey's Toontown Fair. Here you will find the famous flying elephant Dumbo, which has been converted to have two Dumbos meaning double the fun, plus the weight is much better now because you actually get to wait inside an air-conditioned circus-themed play area with your kids. 
I love Dumbo. I think it is a classic. I have a lot of nostalgia for Dumbo. And of course, the Clemson Dumbo is here. Also in Storybook Circus, you've got the Barnstormer, which is your kid's first coaster featuring the great Goofini. And speaking of characters, Storybook Circus is also where we've got Pete's Silly Sideshow, which is a character meet and greet location with Minnie, Daisy, Donald, and Goofy. Beyond that, you've got Big Top Souvenirs, which is a treat shop slash souvenir shop. And you've got the Casey Jr. Splash and Play area if you want to let your kids get wet. But again, Storybook Circus is technically part of Fantasyland, so it doesn't get its own winner. But if it did, honestly, it would be the detail. There are so many details in this land. It is unbelievable, and I don't think people appreciate it. But I'll show you one of my favorites. I'll save the rest for a future Secrets video. Right here outside of Dumbo, if you look down in the ground, you will see an elephant's favorite snack, peanuts. You'll also see elephant prints. If you keep on walking through what is called New Fantasyland, even though it's over a decade old at this point, this was the big expansion of Fantasyland in 2012 that added Storybook Circus, Seven Doors Mine Train, and then this new section, which features a few things. For starters, you've got Ariel's Grotto, where you can meet Ariel. You've also got Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid, the Omni Mover attraction that puts you inside the Little Mermaid story with big animatronics of Ariel and Sebastian and unfortunately Ursula. It's a really cute ride though, you should check it out. Got a couple snack locations this way as well, Prince Eric's Market and Gaston's Tavern. Gaston's Tavern features things such as a ham and cheese pretzel sandwich, the LeFou Brew, which is a non-alcoholic slushy, and my personal favorite thing, the gigantic cinnamon roll, which to be honest, makes the short list. Also over here in New Fantasyland, you've got Enchanted Tales with Belle, which is a show featuring Belle from Beauty and the Beast. It's really, really cool, and I recommend anyone check it out at least once because of the interactive mirror. It's unbelievable, plus Lumiere is incredible, and it's fun for your little ones especially because they get to be cast in a small production of Beauty and the Beast. And lastly in Fantasyland, you've got Be Our Guest Restaurant. This is a restaurant inside the Beast Castle, incredibly themed to Beauty and the Beast. Now, Be Our Guest Restaurant used to operate a little bit differently. It used to be quick service at breakfast and lunch and signature prefix three course meal at dinner. Nowadays, it is all signature prefix for lunch and dinner, so it is quite expensive. However, much like I feel Cinderella's Royal Table is a must do at least once, I feel the same way about Be Our Guest. For stars, I think the food is very good. I think it's much better than Cinderella's Royal Table, but you're not going for the food. You're going for the incredible ambiance, the incredible ballroom, the West Wing, even the Rose Room, which is a room invented just for this restaurant. But it is so magical to be inside the castle. It's got to go on your list at least once, especially if you're a Beauty and the Beast fan. So Be Our Guest also goes on my list. So with all of these choices, from classic Fantasyland, New Fantasyland, and Storybook Circus, what comes out on top? The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. I know, I know that's probably not what you're expecting. It's probably not anyone else's top pick in Fantasyland. But for me, it just edges out Be Our Guest because Be Our Guest is doing the prefix meals right now. If Be Our Guest still had quick service lunch and dinner, this would be number one. But because it's limited, because you have to commit to a three course expensive prefix meal, be Our Guest dropped a little bit in my book. Still delicious, you should still go, but it's not gonna be my favorite thing. Now I love Peter Pan's Flight, I love It's a Small World, I have a lot of nostalgia with both of those. And right on cue, like I said, I really enjoy Seven Doors Mine Train. There's also some great snacks in Fantasyland. I enjoy that lemon Joel Whip, I really enjoy Gaston Cinnamon Roll. And despite my fear of Ursula, I do like Little Mermaid, I like the mirror and Enchanted Tales as well. There's a lot to love in Fantasyland. But one attraction that makes me smile ear to ear every time I ride it is the Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. I love Tigger, I love Winnie the Pooh, I love the honeypot vehicle that moves with you and bounces with Tigger. I just think it's such a fun and at this point underrated attraction that in the hardest lane to choose from, I'm going with the Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Come bounce with me. It's great, doesn't it? <laughs> Made our way into the final land of the Magic Kingdom, Tomorrowland. 
First up, you've got Cosmic Ray's Starlight Cafe, a quick service restaurant with burgers, chicken tenders, classic theme park food, but most importantly, your friend of mine, Sunny Eclipse, the lounge singer. Across the street, you've got the Tomorrowland Speedway, which is an attraction that allows you to drive little cars through Tomorrowland. More of a kid's favorite. Neither of these things are mine so far. Up above, of course, you'll see the People Mover, the Tomorrowland Transit Authority People Mover, to be precise. This does make the short list. This is a slow moving attraction that takes you on a relaxing tour around Tomorrowland. You get to go inside Space Mountain and Buzz Light your Space Ranger spin. You get to go past the model of Progress City, which was Walt's original idea for Epcot. Great views of Tron. It is absolutely the most relaxing ride in the Magic Kingdom, though it certainly makes the list. Tomorrowland is also home to the newest attraction in all of Walt Disney World. Tron light cycle run. This high speed roller coaster has you climb aboard a light cycle and make a run in the grid based on the fan favorite film, Tron. And while I do like Tron and I think it's pretty fun, I also think it's really short. It's like 67 seconds long. And as of right now, it's a hassle to ride because it's either virtual queue or fancy ride. So Tron doesn't make the list. Tomorrowland is also home to the Carousel of Progress from the 1964-65 New York World's Fair. This does make my list, however, because it is one of the only historical Disney things that Walt Disney World has their hands on. Most of the time, stuff like this ends up over in Disneyland, but it is the show that takes you through the 20th century with John and the rest of the family. Walt Disney himself worked on it, so I enjoy it. Plus, it's got that classic song, It's a Great Big Beautiful Tomorrow. You also have Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin in this land, which is a shooting game with Buzz Lightyear. Obviously, that makes my short list because I'm very competitive and Buzz is my favorite character. And you have the Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor, which is a comedy stand-up show featuring the monsters from Monsters, Inc. It's actually very funny and it's based on audience participation. So it's a very enjoyable, underrated place to sit down, catch a break, get some air conditioning. And I promise you'll laugh probably harder than you think you would at a show like that. Of course, I love the Joffrey's Revive, the Joffrey's Coffee Cart, the full service Joffrey's here in Tomorrowland. And that leaves just a few things, one of which I need to try out. You've also got the lunching pad here in Tomorrowland located underneath the People Mover load area. Quick service spot with a variety of snacks, pretzels, hot dogs, slushies. And on top of the People Mover, you've got the Astro Orbiter, which is a Dumbo style rocket ship attraction. Now I am leaving out two things. And for science, we got to go check out one of them because it may be able to take home the gold here in Tomorrowland. And that is Anti-Gravity's Galactic Goodies. This is where you can get a variety of soft serve treats and they have a brand new snack that has been screaming my name and I gotta get it to see if it can unseat my fan favorite going in. Now this new treat has a lot riding on it because it's competing against Space Mountain. Space Mountain is one of my favorite rides in all of Disney World. It's an original to Disney World. It opened up here first in 1975. It's that roller coaster in the dark that puts you in a rocket ship and blasts you throughout a space. I once again can't stop laughing when I'm on it and I have a lot of fond memories of riding it as a child. But it's competing against this, a shaky Jamaica ice cream float from Anti-Gravities. Now this isn't the first time we've had an ice cream float featuring shaky Jamaica, which is my favorite cold brew on the planet. They had it at Animal Kingdom, but it was hard pack ice cream. This one is soft serve ice cream and you can choose any flavor you want. There's vanilla, there's chocolate, there's salsa caramel. I went for vanilla ice cream and a shaky Jamaica. <laughs> A lot riding on this. We're having a little trash can table time. It's trash can table time. Melting quickly. Whoa. Well, that is fantastic. It's so simple. It's my favorite coffee in the world and it's vanilla soft serve. What could go wrong? Nothing. Well, I am making a mess. It melts very quickly in the hot Florida sun. But that is fantastic. If you like coffee and ice cream, this is a delectable treat. Beat Space Mountain. No, it doesn't. Space Mountain's a classic. It's iconic. And this is delicious and absolutely my new favorite snack in the Magic Kingdom. It's a good runner up, but I think Space Mountain's got the nostalgia. You know, I just love Space Mountain, but this is great. Well done, Anti-Gravity. Well done.
And with that, we've come to the end of Molly's Favorite Things here in Magic Kingdom, ending with quite a bang, I'd say, trying a brand new and very delicious treat that seems to be made just for me. Let me know if you would try this. Let me know your favorite thing in the Magic Kingdom as well. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media, come hang out with us on Discord, and until next time, friends, I'm Molly, and it has been so magical. Bye!